In today's video, you will learn what the mask is in singing and how to sing into the mask. I have sung professionally in opera, musical theater, jazz, pop rock, touring with bands, singing on cruise ships all over the world. And I have learned that in order to alleviate the pressure on my vocal cords, it's really important to focus on resonance. Think of it like this. Your vocal cords just create a raw sound and then you wanna amplify that even before you hit the mic with a voice. And how do you do that? You add overtones, you try to add richness. Think of the piano, the strings on their own don't really create that loud of a sound or that full of a sound or not that beautiful of a sound, but it's the body around which creates a resonating chamber, like a space when you're in a big cathedral and you speak or you sing in there, everything is amplified, right? Because it resonates. There is a large space in which the sound is happening and it just bounces off, right? And things resonate. And the same happens in singing. What resonates? And that's where the mask comes in. And it's called the mask because it's almost like this is where you would wear a mask, right? It's like if you were to wear a mask for a masquerade, you would probably wear it from like right above your eyes, your forehead. This is where it starts. And then it comes down, covers your nose usually, right? And that's kind of the mask. So we have the nasal cavity. There are hollow spaces there. You have your sinuses and those bones in that nasal space right here, you know, your cheekbones also, we can argue that there is an amount of resonance going on. So the hollow spaces are really very important. Now your mouth cavity, like what's inside of your mouth, that is actually really important. But when we talk about singing into your mask, we really talk about what happens inside of the skull. You can't see it from the outside, but you can either allow sound waves to go there or you can keep them from going there. Now your soft palate is definitely a big part of that. When you lift the soft palate and you open up that space, that's when the sound waves can move everywhere into the mouth and the nasal. We do need the nasal to the mouth and into the nose. That nasal sound is very important. It's only when we have predominantly nasal sound, then it becomes very undesirable. But we do need nasal resonance to be included with everything we do. So here's a test. Pinch your nose and then sing an ah. ah. If I'm lifting my soft palate, that shouldn't affect ah. Now it's not really going through my nose. It is resonating in here. What about if I do an E? e I can do that here too. What if I do an NG? And now that it becomes tricky because now I need, because I'm closing off, I'm basically the soft palate and the back of my tongue, they meet and they close off that space. It can only travel through the nose. The air can only go there. Nothing can travel anymore when I'm pinching my nose when I do an NG. However, you have to remember that the soft palate and tongue where they meet, that's only one part of where you can open space. What's important is that behind that, we call it the pharynx. There is potential for opening. So I can sing an NG. See how the tongue in the front makes a difference even on the NG? That is part of the mask. I feel like the mask isn't just here. The mask kind of covers the entire face. And I feel like depending on what sound we want to create, the mask changes in shape and size. What we want is to add as much resonance as possible. So which means inside the mouth cavity when possible in that pharyngeal area when possible, lifting that soft palate when possible, and then basically creating as much open, open space as, as possible. Now, there are different sounds. The open vowels are really where you can create the most open space and the most resonance and ringing in the big mask. So whenever you have a more specific sound that doesn't allow you to open up everywhere, that's when the mask, I feel, gets a little smaller. Now, an E resonates, I feel like, right between your eyes. The 
higher you go, the more important it is to have that forward resonance. And you achieve that by opening as much as possible all those spaces, not closing them up. Now, even when you do an NG, sing. since I can't open that soft palate can't be lifted, it wouldn't be an NG anymore. That's when inside of the mouth, it's really important to keep kind of some space. Sing. See, now it's ringing here. It keeps ringing here because I'm allowing some sound to still have space. <laughs> If I'm closing everything, it's like, sing. Very, very, very nasal, only, only nasal resonance. Sing. Or, Versus, no, no, no. We want to not just have the nasal resonance because then it would be nasal. The mask means it's everywhere. Hey everyone, did you know I'm also on Spotify and all the podcasting apps? So if you want to listen on the go, just subscribe to the podcast and you don't have to watch the video. You can just listen and practice whenever you're out and about. I will put the link below and now let's get back to the video. And I feel sometimes it's misleading. The mask, it feels like what you imagine is you want to place it here. But really what you're trying to do by doing that is opening more space here and in the throat, which then allows sound waves to actually move there. You can't really move anything here. You can't move anything here. You can only move Your lips, your tongue, the back of your tongue, the soft palate, that pharyngeal space, and your larynx, of course. Your larynx ha plays a large role in where the sound is going because it has probably the hugest effect on how dark or bright something becomes. So, so I feel like everything works together. Now let's do a couple of exercises to really feel that difference between having that only nasal and then opening up into something that has more space. That's really what's important here. Or What we want is to be more aware of how resonance changes as we are changing shape and how to include the nasal resonance along with that mouth cavity resonance, which then makes up the entire mask. Now, everything in singing, those terms, I think they leave a lot of space for interpretation because it's not anything that is written in stone, you know, how you feel it or there are physical laws that apply, you know, that maybe some bony structures. When you hit certain frequencies, there is resonance. And yes, you know what? There's definitely a vibration in the chest when I speak in chest voice and when I speak lower pitch. Is. The higher I go, the less I can feel the vibration here. It goes more here. And of course, faster vibrations are harder to feel just with our, you know, hand. Someone recently commented, there's no chest resonance. There is no such thing. And you do not breathe with your diaphragm, but only with your lungs. Well, the lungs are where the air goes, but without the diaphragm, the lungs have no space and there is no motion. You're, you can't fill the lungs unless you have that mechanism. It's like when you go to a ventilator in the hospital, there's this, you know, it goes up and down. It has to push the air in and out. And that's what the diaphragm does. And with resonance, it's the same. There are definitely sound waves that make different structures vibrate. And you can literally feel it, that chest resonance. That's why it's called chest voice. You can actually really measure this. It does resonate here more. And some things have a higher frequency. So smaller bones will resonate. So like, for example, like your nose. Mm, you can even feel the vibration in here when you do this. Eee, eee, eee. 
and how it changes and how it sometimes vibrates and doesn't depending on where you open spaces. This could all be confusing, but really what I want you to do is just to experiment with how sound changes as you change the shape of that vowel or the consonant that you are singing on. So an See how many different shapes I can make? So it creates a lot of very, very different sounds. I can make so many different sounds out of just one vowel. I could make it more open, more closed, darker, lighter, lower larynx, higher larynx, um, more nasal resonance or less. Experiment. And then you will feel, I promise, when you have that sweet spot, I call it, where you feel like everything is evenly resonant and there, it doesn't feel like something is cutting off or something is choking you as you're singing through some letters, like that NG or an N when it's really high. It could feel like you're choking off your sound. When you keep the sound flowing and resonating and it feels like it's brilliant all the time and not closing off, which, of course, the NG, when it's only through the nose, it does sound like, uh, it does feel like it's choking you off. But when you open that mouth cavity, sing, it does feel a lot more comfortable and less choky. It's all about you experiment with all the extremes, you know, the very low larynx, the very high larynx, in order to feel where is the neutral larynx that moves freely. And the bright sound, the dark sound, where is the middle ground here? very nasal and very, very open to find the middle ground. So experiment with that and let me know in the comments, are you more confused now? <laughs> the goal was just to kind of lay out all the things that you can experiment with. And I thank you for watching. Until next time, always keep a song in your heart and always keep on singing.